Welcome back everybody to Malta Archery. Today we have something very special. Some of you, it's a bit windy, so excuse the movement of the camera. Uh, some of you gun shooters might know the company Mentis. And they built a nice device for their guns and for rifles. And now they developed one for bow and arrow. And they reached out to me and they said, we would like to send you one of our items if I want to check it out. And then I said, of course, I will do that. So this is what you get. A nice box, the Mantis X8 Archery Shooting Analysis System. You can attach the smart sensor on your bow. You can control it and analyze it, the data on your mobile phone and you can improve your performance. There it's written, the Mantis X8 is a revolutionary shooting system that helps improve your precision. While attached to any bow with the included adapter, the X8 analyzes your shooting mechanics, diagnoses issues and gives instantaneous feedback to help improve and so on. So this is what you get. You can download then the app. Of course, I did this already. So we do a quick unboxing just in case you have more guys shooting. So what you get is first this one. We are serious about shooting. The questions such as in the tab, there's that phone number, the email and the website written. And on the back side, you have the quick start guide, which tells you download the Mantix X Archery app from the App Store or Google Play, attach the Mantix X Smart Sensor to your bow, and then open Mantix X Archery app and follow the instructions. It's actually quite simple. So, and then you get a really pretty, you know, this is the box. You get a really pretty small hard case. And in the hard case, ta-da, yes, that's all, <laughs> small thingy. They developed it for a gun, so you can put it on the rail and this thing will realize, recognize all your movements while you shoot. So that's just really interesting. So I think if it works how I think, then even testing Hatra consistency, but we get to this when I tested it properly. So what do you get else is of course a charging cable, USB, you get a sticker from Mantis and you get this piece and this is how you attach the the sensor to your bow but to this we get later i need to first find a bow but i tell you something then about this in a second it's a little windy so and then of course i will try and put it on with my ipad i hope you see it now so you can of course sign in to so when you open the mantis app it looks like this you can sign in then for and save all your data there you can connect there you have your analy analysis page and you have here your groups, but I didn't sign in now because there's no internet obviously. And you have the settings where you can set everything if you shoot right hand, left hand, a compound bow or a recurve bow. We see how this all works and then you have the, the location if it's on the top, on the bottom or left or right. Connect this one to it, you turn it on. Then it's already looking for a Bluetooth connection. You connect it and then you can calibrate it, obviously. So you leave it there and sit down on the steel surface to calibrate this with automatically. So now it's calibrated. And when you move this thing, it will show you here then in a diagram your movement. It's too windy. And this is a set, it's quite interesting. First of all, it's made more for the Olympic Greek of archers and compound archers, but I think if it works, and we will try this, that you even hatra and stuff like this, this movement should be recognized by this machinery. And then you can really see, did I do hatra with the release before, after, and all these discussions, maybe we get there. So this is how it looks like then, the analysis, but we go from there once we mount it somewhere and when the wind is stopping it a little so we turn this off now we mount it first on a typical i call it now again olympic bow but you know it's a modern recurve and we have even a special archeress from italy here today she was once a, an italian champion she will shoot for us this thing first and then we see how it goes i have no idea Let's see. What I have here now is a modern Olympic recurve bow. You will see in a second the beautiful archeress. And this is the item. And there is a small attachment with a double-sided tape. And then the first problem is for me we are to attach it. So I guess I will simply stick it down there. Or the other way around, doesn't matter most probably. Like this. Looks kind of fancy. 
So I now say welcome to Sonia. This is the archeress. She will shoot today with her bow. What's the name of your bow? I have no idea. She has no idea. It's the name of the bow. She no, practiced. I have no idea. She has no idea. <laughs> but her name is Sonia. I have an idea. So she will shoot the bow. We attach this thingy down there. Mm. We will sync it now with my iPad. And then we see what happens. I have no idea. Like the bow. Like the bow. <laughs> and you were Italian champ. What, what, what was your highest? Italian I champ won a few Italian championships, yes, with this. So, you ready? Always. And then go. You set up the movement of your bow, you see it, and she's holding it, and she's releasing it. And then you see what the angle of the bow is doing and the movement after. Oh, it's clear. Now you see when you go over there now to check it out, then you see this is the setup how she moved the bow while she was setting up the shot. That is when she was holding the bow, the movement. And that was then after the release with the bow. So it's kind of interesting. So, and the problem I have now, of course, this thing needs to be in this position or in this position on the bow. <laughs> it's not so easy. I have nothing pointing away and I can't, I mean, I can try it, putting it like this, but then most probably the reading, but when we don't try, we don't know. We simply put it now here, and then we see maybe what the reading will do. I have no idea. So let's see if it works or not. So you press the play button, and then you tell me hold, set up, hold, and shoot. And I shoot without katra, completely normal stiff. And I think it's time to go home and analyze this all and maybe do some more shooting, we see. So we need to get used to this thing, and now we need to analyze it first properly and see what this thing can tell us about my difference in shooting, Khatra or no Khatra, and compared to an Olympic bow. And then we see, no idea. See you later. Come over here. Say goodbye to the people. <laughs> goodbye to the people. <laughs> Say goodbye, people. Bye, people. It was nice to see you. If you want to see her more often, let me know because she will learn now, of course, thumb release with me <laughs> and then she will get her own nice bow and then she will show us, we know what we do, Katra and string twist, she's, she's oh, you know, a pro, she's a pro. Stop it. So then what we, what we figured out now is because you always have to press the button again and do the shooting cycle, there is an open training session then where it records 10 shots, one after each other, where you can check again if you shoot a recurve, a compound right or left hand. And this is now open training, and now we see what we do. You see the movement of the bow. Yeah. Can I? Yep. Simply shoot whatever you do. Uh huh. See that? See that? Huh? Oh, it fell. Too violent. So we need to stop. Unfortunately. So again, one weak point with the self-adhesive thingy in every shot now it fell down, so we had to attach it now with tape. So what is written there? The Mantix X will record the bow movement from your ready position until you release the arrow. You will get a score each shot based on how stable the bow is just before you release. Sessions are currently limited to 10 shots each. Hit the start button when ready. So we hit the start button when ready. And we are ready. Now you see the bow movement, what she's doing with her bow, wiggling around like a crazy. And now you see she's holding and shooting. And now you see the bow movement afterwards. Oh, it's a bit windy. See? So now she sets up again, holding in position and shooting. See? Now you see the bow movement. And the release and what she's doing with the bow after the release. Uh, show the light. Welcome back. Sonia is back. Say hello. Hi. Hi. So we do it now again. We fiddled now around a bit and we realized a bit more of things this uh, item can do. And now we let shoot Sonia 10 more arrows and then we see directly the, in the analysis if she is moving her bow hand while she'll release or after the release. So I put this thing now in training mode which is, I forgot, no, no, it's there, it's there. 
open training. See, we have a recurve. She shoots left hand. Now she shoots right hand, but the bow is in the left hand. And we go. We see the angle of the bow here, and we see the movement here. So now we let her shoot. It's recording. Audio is fine. You look good. So I see now when she holds still. So you need, this is what I learned too, because I shoot fast and this thing doesn't realize where the center is. So you need to stand a little in very slow and full draw and then it realizes, okay, I'm there. And then you let go and then you can check the, the, the Abweichung. You're asking me? Yes, uh, yeah, you know, but you know what I mean and I will Google it and whatever. So take your time, nice release, yes. So we shoot 10 and you see always on the side the angle of the bow and you can later even check then when you analyze it. But this I will do at home with a screen recording because you can see it better on a screen recording. See, and then you see always the movement of the bow. You see the angle of the bow and then the motion of release. So we are done. Oh wait, I need to save it first. Save it. So this is now Sonia the second. You can get your errors. Mm -hmm. Second set one. Kind of save. So this is how you save it. And then you can go here to history. And you see now the saved one from today. And you see all the shots. And now you could check all the string angles while she shot. So you can check this one. And here you can come now from every of these eight shots. This was shot number one. And here you see now the movement. The red dot is when she shoots and the white dot is uh, when... Now the white dot is when she shoots and the red dot is when the arrow already left the bow. So there's almost no movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is as if everything with you would be cheap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You, like you know, this rain cover has the purpose <laughs> to keep the water away from the hay, you know, and when you make holes in the rain cover, I think this defeats, defeats the purpose <laughs> quite a lot, but it's okay. It's not the first time, as you see. People like to shoot this rain cover. Because it stands out, it's white. Oh, it stands out. Stop it. It's outstanding. <laughs> Stop it. So... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. record? Mm -hmm. So the only thing I don't like, we had to put now, I put a metal bracket where I taped now this item and I taped it now on my bow. This is what I don't like. So if I could make a suggestion, because even we had to tape it on the recurve bow, uh, Mantis make a bracket. Not only this one small thing which slides in there because it doesn't help with this double-sided tape, and then some Velcro solution or whatever that you can mount it on several bows in different positions, then it would make it more, then it would make it more versatile. So, but I shoot now six arrows without Katra and then we see, we see again the movement and whatever. That's not working anymore, see? This is then a little, when it doesn't work, it's a little annoying. Why is it not working now? See, now doesn't detect any motion, even if it's connected. So what we do now is we start everything new here. So, and then we start everything again. You turn on this one, you turn on this one. Then it tells you connect, connect. It's connected, you need to calibrate it again, of course. So I put it now down. Two, three seconds without movement. Calibrated. So it's still on, calibrated, and now we have open training. When I press here now, you should see something no, happening. Don't we have to make pain? No, no, it doesn't. It shows you the session, but doesn't help. I did it now always like this, but it doesn't register anything now. Oh, now it's there. I had to smack it in the face. Okay. Good. Oh, now oh, it registered it directly as two shots. Yeah, of course. So that's hmm? I'm not saying that it's not good, but we need to fix that. So it's not going to work again. Look at this. 
Why is it not working? Yeah, I think you need to shoot it. Let's see. Okay, then we start a new session. But it should show something. Because otherwise I shoot for nothing. Okay. No Katra said. And I have only six arrows, as said. So. A nice grouping. We stop this one. Would you mind holding my precious oh. raptor? We can start. Sure. And now, katra and a little string twist, obviously. Yoo-hoo. I like the sound of the raptor. And then you can see the white part of the line later. We'll show you the movement from the shot until the arrow left the bow. And then you see if Katra is working or not. So it gives you more speed, more flexibility. When you choose arrows, oh, it was already six arrows. I should stop talking and shooting. So that was now Raptor with uh, Katra and String Twist. So Dela, now we are done with the shooting with the Mantix X8 for archery. And I will do screen recording all this analysis of these shots here will be interesting to see here you can choose now all the shots i made these ones are now the last ones i made then you can choose your shots here shot number one then you see the movement from the shot the bow goes to the left and you see the katra movement but i show you this in the screen recording so what do i think about this device it's 160 dollars it's yeah, you can say pricey. Depends for what you want to use it. I think, would it be helpful for you for an Olympic archer that you see what your hand movement was while you release? So is, 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 it a, is it a training device which is useful for Olympic archers? I think so. Because since the repetition of the movement is important, most probably pinpointing what happens after, even when the arrow is leaving the bow and after, I think is important. Mm -hmm. You can correct that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting when I practice now a little more that you get a constant hatra because this is really a tricky thing to do. And with this one, I think you see what you did in your shots. You might want, don't want to shoot always 10 arrows because you forget which arrow was what, but when you shoot three arrows and then you analyze directly what your shot was doing, then you get this a bit more in your what you did and what you did wrong, all right. So for this it's okay. The only thing I simply don't like is how you have to mount it. So this is Mantis. If you want to improve something, make a bracket which you can slide this thing on in plastic or 3D printed, whatever. And then with a Velcro solution that you can Velcro it on a bow like this, on a, on a recurve bow, that you have more mounting options for this. This would be my only suggestion. The rest, I think sometimes it's simply lagging mm. that you don't see if it's already working or not. Then it's a little confusing, but you get used to it. And it's... It's also recording the shots. So until you do a full shot, probably it doesn't do yeah, but usually, movement. But usually when you stand here and move it already, then you see it already moving. So that's why it was a little confusing now for me. But you get used to it. The app is maybe not the most intuitive to use, at least for me. So I had to really work out what means what and then the colors of when the colors change. So it would be nice to have an explanation directly here on the side that you know which color means what would be easier to understand than when you do your analysis. But for the rest, I think it's a very good idea. I mean, it's already way common in with gun shooters. They use the thing for the, for the pistols and for the rifles. It's good for this. There's one thing that I don't know if we said that since the, the um, sticky tape is on mm. this side, we tried to put it vertically and mm. it wasn't working. So it's important mm -hmm. that it stays in this position. And yes. on the recurve, we could stick it mm. under the handle, but here we yes, can't. So. Exactly. On the recurve, we could stick it there, but the sticky tape was not sticking the second time anymore. You can't 
don't mount it this way at least yet because they simply need to have the orientation of the item like this so right now it's only working in this position so if you shoot horsebow or a longbow or whatever you always need to find a contraption and make something working like this an and what i don't like is that they always use no tape and then you throw it away you can use another tape so if there would be a 3d or whatever an angle which make this thingy slide directly in and then you tie, tie it down with velcro or something you know better than me would be more useful more versatile for all the arches and not only for the olympic ones or compound shooters because this is a really interesting thing and i tell you guys when I prove that this thing is working, I guess that a lot of traditional or these horseback archers, this, they, they shoot this Asian pose with this Khatra, they will get one of this because they want to test this. So, now we need to talk about affiliate. <laughs> I'm joking. No, you're not. I'm not joking. <laughs> we talk about affiliate links now. Voucher codes and affiliate links, but Mantis, I will talk to you first, okay? We're good. That's all. We have something more to say? No. Thank you very much for joining. It was fun if you want to see her more often, or especially we could do, of course, record her while she starts learning thumb release and you see her progress in a very short time when you take it serious. <coughs> okay, we don't do that. <laughs> we have fun Maybe. and we should now be thumb release with her and then we see how we get there. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next one and you catch her in the next one most probably too. <laughs> bye. Say bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Arrivederci. Basta. Ok, ciao. These are the colors in the readout. Blue for raceable, green, blue, blue, yellow, full draw, stability core. What is interesting for me, release until arrow leaves bow is white. And then arrow after, the arrow after he left the bow, the follow through. So we look for the white color until it turns into this red dot. What we see on the first is Sonia's shooting analysis. And here you can go now in the app and see each individual shot. Or you can see this overview of all the steps, speed, release, speed, hold, position, etc. But here you see now the white dot and the red dot. And this movement in between is what is of importance for me later for Katra. And here you see sometimes she had some movements until the arrow left the ball and sometimes it was very close. When we check then the individual shots, she made here. Then we can scrap through the whole shooting circle and then you see the X is the release. And then you see from release until the arrow left the bow almost no movement in this shot. Shot number two, almost no movement. Shot number three, a little bit of a movement, but this was we could see it in the video. Shot number four, no movement, very good. Shot number five, no movement. She's really good, so this is not a big deal. You can scrap through all 10 shots like this. You see again from the shot to until the arrow left. No movement. Here we have a little movement, but filming and doing things. Now we come to mine. My first set of six arrows was without Khatra, so I tried to keep my bow hand still, but it's for me quite hard to shoot without Khatra. I'm totally not used to it here. You see there is almost no movement from the shot until the arrow left the bow in shot 1, shot 2, almost no movement, shot 3, no movement at all, so really steady hand, no katra at all, shot 4, a little movement, shot 5, very small movement, and shot 6, again, very small movement. And now the next will be my shots with katra, more or less, then you see already here, when you scrape through it, it goes a little further out, goes into the third circle, so there is a movement. You see that the bow is moving before the arrow is leaving the bow again. A little less movement, was not a good katra, a bit more movement, and again a bit more movement. So overall, it works. You can see that the bow is out of the way before the arrow is leaving the bow, so when you perform katra properly, it works. Needs more testing, but it's an interesting device.